The internet is changing. In the past few years, there's been a slow, gradual shift, but now it's getting faster. Countries are starting to get more wary of the data that their citizens broadcast to the internet for anyone to see. What if a company was directly cooperating with a foreign government hostile to your country? Could it use its online services to gather intelligence from millions of citizens? The quest for control and the fear of foreign powers is leading to a fractured internet. In our story of what could be the new reality of the internet, we have to start earlier at the beginning. When the internet first came in the 1990s, people didn't really see how it could change society. Not many people used it during that first decade. In 1990, only around 20% of people in the US had access to a computer. Flash forward to the end of the 1990s and over half of the US population had. All across the world, the internet was gaining steam. But even with this rapid mass adoption, only one in four people had internet access. However, even the small amount of internet users didn't stop governments from worrying. Especially authoritarian ones, because in countries like those, it's all about control. Even in the early days of the internet, information didn't flow completely freely. China realized that the industrial age was coming to an end and the information age was starting. But in order to develop their country, they needed internet access within their lands. But then, that same internet access posed a problem. Western ideas were starting to creep in onto Chinese computers and with the rapid adoption of the internet and so much information being produced, China was going to quickly lose control. The ruling Communist Party of China needed to do something in order to keep their control in power. So in 1996, the Golden Shield project started. However, it wasn't put into practice until 12 years later in 2008. You might know the Golden Shield project by a different name, the Great Firewall. The project was more than just an internet filtering system. It was a whole security and surveillance behemoth. The first generation of the project focused on blocking domain names that the Communist Party didn't like. They were able to do this because they had control over the internet service providers. They also created systems to track users that violated the rules, forcing restaurants and cafe to install surveillance software. The main point of this was to de-anonymize people. Citizens had to register with their IDs to access the internet and even download apps. In future generations, the government introduced things like keyword filters to detect undesirable content. And remember, all of this was being used to shut off the Chinese people from the western side of the internet. The Communist Party wanted to create their own Chinese version of the web. So you have keyword filters and websites blocked. But if you wanted to, you could just use a VPN to hop over the wall and access western sites. So the government analyzed VPNs and found out that they could distinguish what internet connections were made through VPNs or not. Then they could block those VPN connections. And as a result, many VPNs became useless against the firewall. However, VPN companies kept developing software to circumvent the firewall even after all these measures. So finally, in the Great Firewall Saga, we're getting to the point where the government is cracking down on the people that actually make the VPNs, making it illegal to sell them. People started getting put in prison. For example, a man named Dai Mo was sentenced to three years in jail and was fined 10,000 RMB for selling and using VPN services in China illegally. Through the Golden Shield project, the Chinese citizens have to use government approved sites, effectively separating them from the West. China's own internet. And what China is doing is happening across the world right now. Enter in RuNet. See, Russia realizes the only way you can have complete control over the internet is to create your own. And this is the end scenario for authoritarian countries. They would have complete control. On their own separate internet, they would be able to see everything. 
In 2019, Vladimir Putin started consolidating control over the internet infrastructure in Russia. Internal documents show that the government has been demanding state-owned sites move from foreign hosting services to Russian ones. And on top of this, the government is forcing internet providers in the country to implement site blocking software to control the flow of Russian information. The Kremlin is even creating their own domain system just for the Russian people. So no more .com or .net in Moscow. The war in Ukraine has led Russia to become more and more isolated and wary of the Western internet. The control Russia wants is a dangerous trend that some countries are following. Western countries are beginning to want sovereignty over their citizens' data. That's why TikTok is getting banned in so many different places because it's basically just a farm for the Chinese government to extract more data from the rest of the world. Even European countries are getting nervous about American tech companies like Facebook and Google. The regulations the EU is passing are starting to make it incompatible with the US because the privacy laws are so different between the two continents. Just recently, new European privacy laws are threatening Facebook and Instagram offline. The law? It was ruled that the companies couldn't share European data with the US. The growing wariness of countries over their own data could create a new fractured internet. One where data may just circulate within a country and never leave its borders. One where you can't communicate with people around the globe. An isolated internet world. Countries are moving more and more towards that outcome. And a fractured internet comes with a host of problems. First is authoritarian countries. A closed country-wide internet is what authoritarian leaders are dreaming of. Not only would they be able to suppress anything, but they would be able to broadcast their dangerous propaganda to the masses. Iran is one of these countries that is set to complete their national internet project by 2025. And Iran is definitely not a place of internet freedom. The government is known to initiate internet blackouts when there's unrest, such as a three-day blackout during protests. The supreme leader of Iran has envisioned that their own internal network will be so powerful that citizens won't go to the outside internet. He said his people will experience, quote, a better online situation. But the problem is, Iranian officials only want to give their people a better online situation when they aren't criticizing the government. So with the national internet, the Iranian government would be able to censor anyone they see fit, and they would have a chokehold on the information in the country. The problems of the splinter net go way beyond authoritarian countries, though. Cyber threats would get even worse than they are now. If countries have their own separate internets, it would be a lot easier to take out your enemy's service because you wouldn't face any repercussions. You aren't interconnected, so there would be no possibility of collateral damage. Splinter nets could destroy global communication. Other splinter nets may not be compatible with each other. The reason we can talk to anyone around the world right now is because our internet is set up with the same standards. If there's like 30 different internets, it'll get really hard to send messages back and forth. This is why we need to protect the open internet and not let ourselves separate, because if we do, we could be entering a new global internet dark age.